Michelle Jingris alongside Anson Carter, and we are now very excited to welcome in the radio voice of the New York Islanders, Chris King. Chris, thanks so much for taking the time and joining us today. No, oh, thanks for having me. Chris, good to see you. Good to see you, Ace. <laughs> Chris, lots of questions to ask you about how you've been broadcasting these games because you're really known for your goal calls, right? You like to get your voice pretty high on those calls. Um, I'm curious, is there one that stands out to you? And also, how do you recreate that same energy in an empty arena? Because I feel like that's got to be pretty difficult to do. Yeah, that is the challenge. Certainly, no doubt about it, Michelle. But, uh, you know, I think the league has done a really good job of, of pumping the sound into our ears, into our headphones. We hear the sticks, the pucks, the, the fake crowd, if you will, the glass, the PA, the goal horn, the, the refs mics. We hear all that. So, you know, that, that helps me get that energy level up. I think if we were just sitting in a, in a studio, which we are, our, our flagship radio station studio, WRHU, with no sounds at all, it would be harder for me to recreate that excitement and it would be not as good a listen for the fans. So, you know, they're used to hearing those things. And I think in the empty arena, you know, the NHL has even amplified those sounds even more. So it actually sounds better than a normal broadcast would. And uh, I just get excited when, when, when good things happen. So uh, I call it the Peter, Bra uh, Peter Brady syndrome from the old Brady Bunch when Peter's voice would go up when, uh, when he would try to sing. So I can't control it. It just kind of happens. And uh, yeah, any big goal that the Islanders score, th that tends to happen for me. So I just go with it and uh, it's something I can't control. It's kind of always happened. For coming off of pause in action where the NHL players decided to postpone play, to reflect uh, and have intimate conversations with one another. Uh, what are your thoughts about that? And what do you think? I mean, Barry Trotz has said some really interesting things about his thoughts uh, with the team and how players should reflect. And there's a bigger picture here than just missing games. How uh, we should really try to think about creating change. Uh, just kind of dive in a little bit about that, about your point of view and what you think the Islanders are doing. Yeah, I think they're doing the right thing, Anson, as is the entire NHL. But you're right. Barry Trotz was very eloquent when asked about it yesterday. And this was before the announcement that, you know, there would be this pause in games for two days. He said, you know, he feels the players need to use this as a platform to get their message out. And he felt the best thing was those players doing exactly that. And then we had Anders Lee the captain of the team, you know, talk about how he spoke with everyone on his team. Then in that Toronto bubble, he spoke to the players of the other three teams there. Then they reached out to everyone in Edmonton and as a group of the eight remaining teams and the NHL Players Association to get together and come out and say, hey, there are issues that are much bigger than playoff hockey games. And this is certainly one of those. So I think, you know, they did the right thing as a group to get together on this, to make this call, to take a pause for two days, to, to put the focus rightly so on the social injustice, uh, social injustice that's occurring in this country right now. So I think, you know, that's where the focus will be in the National Hockey League for this two day period and, and rightfully so. That game two, the, the Islanders were down three goals to nothing. They come back to score three unanswered goals. Ultimately, they end up losing that game in overtime. So Obviously not the finish that they want, but what did you think of their resilience throughout that game as they look ahead to game three? Could they draw some positives from that? I think that's the key word, Michelle, resilience, right? You know, you're down 3 nothing, and they're down 3 nothing after one period of play. Barry Trotz pulls the goaltender switch to try to spark the club. Semyon Varlamov, who's been so great, comes out. Thomas Grice comes in, and it works to a T. You know, they get that one goal in the second period to make it a 3-1 game, make it doable. And then certainly, you know, to get two in the third, and uh, the J.G. Pajot goal came with just over two minutes to go to tie it. So, yeah, that was about the highest my voice got in that particular game. But, uh, you know, you come back from 3 nothing down to tie a playoff game at three with two minutes to go. It was unbelievably exciting. Unfortunately, you know, it took a crazy bounce in overtime that went against them when the, uh, the shot by Phil Myers actually hit the shaft of Anders Lee's stick, bounced on the ice, and then went up over the glove of Thomas Christ. So it didn't have the ending they want, but, you know, as Anson can tell you, it's something to build on for the next one. They can say, hey, look, we completely outplayed the Flyers in the last two periods. They've dominated the third period of all their Stanley Cup playoff games this year, and I think, you know, they'll be much more ready at the start of Game 3. It's very rare that teams in the NHL these days have home ice advantage, but whenever you're playing at the Coliseum, that place is rocking. Visiting players hated playing there. I know I hated that walk across the parking lot from the Marriott. Talk about how pumped Islander fans, though, are with this UBS arena that's been under construction and will be opening soon. Yeah, you know, Anson, how tough that building could be for opponents. Absolutely. And that's why Islander fans love it. And that's why Islander players love it. So, yeah, the atmosphere at the Coliseum is just, you know, unbeatable as far as I'm concerned. And, and that's what they're trying to do with UBS Arena at Belmont Park. First of all, it's only eight miles down the road from the Coliseum. It's on the same road, Hempstead Turnpike. And uh, what John Ledecky and Scott Malkin, the co-owners of the Islanders, have done is 
toward every single building in the NHL, toward all the NBA arenas, toward most of the football and baseball stadiums too, just to try to get the best of every arena, every stadium and put it into there. So they've done their research. And the bigger part of doing the research is talking to the fans. The fans have told them what they've loved about the Coliseum. They love the intimacy. So they made the UBS arena have the biggest lower bowl of any indoor arena in North America. They love the, the way the noise has nowhere to go. So they put in a low ceiling. This is not going to be one of those cavernous new buildings. It's going to be the sound reverberating off that roof right back down to the ice. They've made sure of that. The fans told them they want more restrooms. It's going to have the most restrooms of any arena in North America as well. So kudos to, you know, the Islander ownership to listen to the fans and hear what they like best about the Coliseum. Basically take all the best of the Coliseum and put it in a brand new building along with what they've seen in all the other great venues around the league. And it's going to be a jewel when it opens in a little over a year. And, you know, it's going to be a special season because it's going to be the 50th anniversary year for the New York Islanders in the NHL. And what better way to celebrate them with a brand new shining gem of a building. Amazing. Well, it seems like they have truly thought of every little detail, as uh, you just alluded to. Uh, Chris, thank you so much for taking the time to stop by today. Good luck throughout the rest of the Stanley Cup playoffs and an exciting future for Islanders fans ahead. All right. Thanks, Michelle. Thanks, Anson, for having me. Hey, Chris, I can't wait to hear your call. <laughs> <laughs> right on, Ace. Right on.